it's that time again. We all knew it would come eventually. We just hoped it might stave off a little bit longer. And no, I'm not talking about holiday planning, Q4, any of that good stuff. I'm talking about a new Google Ads user interface. You heard me. In March of 2023, Google started testing two new user interfaces to replace the current option. And in June, they determined which one they wanted to do, and they announced that they're going to be rolling out the new UI by December of 2023. So in this video, I want to give you a quick, probably not linear, but still decent overview of what the new UI is going to look like. So you'll have a better understanding of what's coming down the pike and also show you where a couple features are now located that you probably use on a regular basis. This Paid Media Pros video is sponsored by Optio, the smarter, more efficient way to manage Google Ads. Optio's platform operates as a second pair of eyes on your accounts, regularly monitoring performance trends to make data-driven optimization suggestions for keyword strategies, bid optimizations, ad copy creation, and more. Better yet, you can save time by implementing their suggested changes directly in their user-friendly interface. Optio is extending their free trial period for Paid Media Pros viewers for 60 days, meaning you get two full months of testing and using Optio on your accounts before you pay a dime. If you're interested in giving it a shot, click the link on the screen right now or in the video description to get started. The first thing I want to take a look at is Google's overview of what is going to be changing with the new interface. And this is from the announcement that they're testing new interface designs. This was on March 2nd of 2023. And in this post, they say that there are going to be three different adjustments that they're looking to make. So we'll scroll past this real quick. Top three changes overall. First one is going to be a new navigation menu. So I'm not going to read the paragraph, but if we scroll down, here are the two screenshots of what they were working on and testing over the course of March into June when they announced the new interface. We had either a single level menu or a two level menu. And the one that ended up winning was this two level menu. So this is going to be the interface that we're walking through. This single level menu seems to be abandoned, doesn't show up anywhere. The other two aspects that Google is trying to accomplish with this reorganization is a more organized interface. So we'll walk through how things are organized in the interface in just a little bit, but I'll admit some of it makes a lot more sense to me than it used to. And I think for people who haven't been advertising for a long time, the interface probably will be a lot more logical and easy to follow based on the way things are grouped now. The last thing is a pretty easy thing just a refreshed look and feel. Every once in a while, Google really likes to just change how everything looks, just so it's new and shiny. If anything, I think the new interface looks a lot more like GA4. So potentially, there's going to be a shorter learning curve between those two platforms, just because they're set up, stylized, organized in a similar fashion. So with that, now let's hop into the account with the new look and feel. And here's the new interface. It looks pretty much exactly like the pictures that we just looked at. Now, the other thing that I want you to pay attention to is as we go through this, one key takeaway I had while I was exploring with this new interface is that what really changed is the left-hand navigation over here, this top level bar up here, which we'll talk about in a little bit, some of the options that we have in the very top portion of the screen. And that's kind of it. Most of the other things that actually fill into this area where you would be doing the work or reviewing the stats or doing any of that, it's pretty much the same. There's not big differences in how the data is shown. It's just all of the navigation and how you would find certain pieces in the interface. So with that, let's start to look at the first column over here on the left, and we're going to start at the top. The first thing is that there is this universal create button that will live up at the top. When you click create, you'll be able to create a campaign, ad group, and search keywords directly from here. Now you can still use the new campaign button, but if you wanted to add in any of these other options, you can do that pretty quickly from that top button. Now the rest of this area is broken out into high level groups. So we're going to have campaigns, goals, tools, billing, and admin. So campaigns is what we're currently on. If I can get that to go away. Campaigns is what we're currently on. We'll come back to this in a little bit. But as you can see here, if we hover over goals, we can start to navigate to any of the individual pieces around conversions, whether it's the summary, the settings, the uploads, Salesforce integrations, all that, as well as measurement and attribution. The next option is the tools. We can do the planning, whether it's a keyword planner, performance planner. We have the shared library for the account as well as content suitability, the Google tag troubleshooting, which is around your policies, the bulk actions, shared budgets and bidding, and your business data. 
Next is going to be the billing. And again, these are all the different options you have in the billing section. The last is admin, where you can see the high level pieces for the account, whether it's access and security, linked accounts, or anything along those lines. Now, the biggest takeaway I want you to have from this is that effectively, what Google has done is it took all of the information in the old interface that was up here, which let's take a look at that real quick. In this old interface, you can see that we have the tools and settings option here. And all of that data used to live in this high level navigation on the top right portion of the screen. And now it all lives over here in this first column on the left. Otherwise, all of the other tools, settings, any of the different pages within the interface are still available in that main navigation option. So again, biggest shift here is that everything that once was up here is now over here on the left. So now that we're in the campaigns tab, let's just start to look at this next level of organization within the interface. The overview and recommendations are going to be pretty much the same. Those aren't going to change that much. But as I mentioned earlier, the organization in the interface has changed quite a bit. The first thing you get below recommendations is insights and reports. And if I hop into another old UI real quick, some of your accounts, just like some of our accounts, might have shown you that the insights and reports piece was up here as well. I'd say it's probably only 25% of the older UI that we see that has the insights and reports tab in this main navigation on the left. Most of them look like this other account where we just see recommendations directly to insights, but then all of the reports themselves still live within the parent category that we have for all the other data points. So in this new UI, insights and reports is going to consist of the insights report, auction insights, search terms, landing pages, the report editor, dashboards, pretty much everything you would use to drill further into performance. And one of the things that I do want to mention is that search terms are now located under the insights and reports. So if you've been using this older interface, you'll know that search terms were located under the keywords parent category, and those live down here. In the new UI, they are in the search terms option here. So that's the first report that is in a little different spot, and it might be a little less logical for folks to find. The second one also still lives in this insights and reports section, and that's devices. In the old UI, we had all of these different options down here. And then in show more, there was a device tab that we could click to directly from this main navigation. In this new UI, to find your device performance, you need to be in the insights and reports, go to where ads showed, and then navigate over to the third tab, which is going to be devices. This is where you'll be able to set your bid adjustment, look at data, analyze how it's working for each device group. It's a little bit buried, but that's how you find it now. I think that's enough for insights and reports for now. The next group is going to be what I call structure. They name it campaigns, but in my mind, this is going to be the structure type of grouping in the account. So here you'll find your campaigns, ad groups, ads, experiments, and campaign groups. This is effectively all of the hierarchy within the account. So if you want to look at any of the specific campaigns, ad groups, any of that, this is where you would navigate to. So this page here is going to be the equivalent of the campaigns homepage that you would find in the old Google Ads UI. Now, the other slight change is that these filters that have been in the old UI, but lived in this secondary navigation over here off to the left and all the way up at the top, those now live directly on top of whatever chart you're looking at and they always stay there. So you can click into your views and filters. This will look very similar to what was there, but then you can select an individual campaign if you want to. Let's say we do that. And now there's a new box for ad groups. And again, you can select an ad group from this dropdown and navigate directly to it from there. If you then want to reverse, you can just come back over here and click on this. And it'll navigate you right back up to the top, but you'll notice that you have still dropped down to the ad groups tab in the left-hand navigation. Overall, this area is still pretty similar to the old interface, not too complex there. The only thing I will point out is that when you're on the campaigns tab, you'll notice above the table here is where you'll have your campaigns drafts, and then settings. This is where campaign settings will now live. As I mentioned earlier, the actual working portion of the screen is going to be very similar to what it was in the past, but now the settings option is just in a different location. Now, for those of you thinking one step ahead on top of that, in the old interface, if we were on the campaigns tab, we would come down to settings and we could find campaign settings there. Then the one right below it is account settings. So where did that go? In the new UI, account settings, you might have seen it earlier, now lives under the admin tab all the way at the top. 
This will take you directly to the exact same page that you would have had in the old UI for account settings. It's just now under admin, again, in probably a spot that's a little bit more logical and easy to find. Skipping to the next section of organization, we have assets. So if we open this up, this is going to be assets and videos. So assets here are now the renamed ad extensions. So again, you'll be able to find all of those associations, all of the different site links, images, business logos, everything will live here, as well as the videos that you use for your account. That one's pretty straightforward. This is effectively just the add-ons to what's being used in the campaigns group. And then the next section down below it is aptly titled audiences, keywords, and content. This to me is a little bit ridiculous because they could have shortened it pretty easily and just said targeting. Here we've got our search keywords, audiences, content, as is named, but also dynamic ad targets, the ad schedule is in there as well. This could have been a wonderful place to put the devices tab, but again, we know that's under insights and reports, but this is where you'll lean into all of those different targeting options that you have for your campaigns. Again, probably an upgrade compared to what was there. So you don't have to navigate to lots of different tabs. They're all under this parent title of audiences, keywords, and content shortened down in my mind to targeting. But with targeting, there's also exclusions. So in the old UI, if we were to navigate to the keywords tab, you'll see we have negative keywords right below our search keywords. In the new UI, not so much. Those don't live there. So if we click on search keywords, just like with the devices report and the campaign settings, we now see that as a secondary tab under search keywords. And this is where you find your negative keywords. You can still apply them at the ad group, campaign, or negative keyword list level. Everything is still the same on that front. It's just an added couple of steps to find where negative search keywords live. Now for this last section, I wanna go back to the campaigns tab. I'm gonna close these up just a little bit. Now the only other things that I wanna talk about are how to augment the way that this new interface looks at a high level. The first way to do that, one of my initial thoughts is having the navigation over here on the left is fine, except now that this section is a little bit bigger than it used to be, if I come down here and scroll, I only have this much working section on the page. Granted, this is my 13 inch monitor. I have a 27 inch external monitor that I can use, but on the page, this is not much working space. So one of the things that you can do is collapse this menu by clicking this hamburger menu up here, and it'll get rid of that secondary navigation that you have on the left. The only problem is it's then a little harder to, you know, navigate. So if you're able to work like this and you're willing to just come up here and click every once in a while, you can do that and then hide it again. But you can't really click anywhere over here to get it to come back other than this menu. Now the other option is going to be this piece up here for appearance. So if we click on this, you can get a tour of the new design, which covers, I think, what is covered in this video. I think I actually did a better job personally, but don't tell them that. You can share feedback on the new design. So if you really love it or you really hate it, I'm sure they will pay lots of attention to what you say and will absolutely make all the edits that you would like to see in there. And if you just totally hate the new interface, you can go back and use the previous design, which will default you to the other one that we've been looking at today. The only problem is the new UI is still coming out in December. It will be rolling out to all accounts by then. So you're really just shooting yourself in the foot of not adapting to the new interface. And then you'll have a cutoff at some point where you can't use the old one. And that'll be a very sad day for you. The last option is around line spacing. And in some of the old interfaces, you can see this showing up as well. You may have noticed when I was in this account that has the insights and reports tab, line spacing was an option up here as well, which I find really interesting because it seems like they're trying to roll out some of the changes that are in the new UI in a slightly updated version of the old UI to get people used to it maybe. I don't know their logic, but you could find it here or in the new interface, you can find it here. From what I can tell, everything defaults to medium spacing. If you really want things to be expanded and you want extra space, you can click on large. You'll notice that everything just kind of expanded a little bit. All the spacing in between the lines, you've got a little bit more room to breathe. But now there's only room for three of my campaigns on this tab. There's nothing else here. So if I want to, I can condense things just a bit. We'll go past medium, which was the default. Look at small. Now we can see upwards of, I don't know, six campaigns on a page. And we can go all the way to extra small. So if you're able to see this pretty well, which honestly I can, then this might be a good option. The only thing that is a little bit terrible about it, 
and I might leave some feedback, is that when you adjust the appearance to have smaller line spacing than medium, these boxes get really cramped. They're even cutting off their own text in there, so I'm not entirely sure if they just didn't pay attention to that or if they just don't care, but it's just a really weird look when this is the drop down that we have. Anyway, those are the two ways that you can either buy yourself more or less space in the interface since the working area of the page did get a little bit more cramped because there's nothing you can do about getting rid of this whole big bar of stuff up here at the top. Even though a lot of it is honestly just empty space until you start clicking into different campaigns and different ad groups or you're on different tabs that might have different settings and stuff over here. There's really nothing we can do about ditching this or narrowing it in the same way that we can get rid of the navigation on the left if we wanted to. And that's pretty much it. A new UI from Google planned to have it rolled out to every account in December of 2023. Hopefully you now have a better understanding of where things live. But again, I actually think a lot of the navigation on the left is grouped in a way that does quite frankly make a lot more sense. Do I love the new UI? I wouldn't go that far but I've seen worse updates, if I'm being honest. So hopefully now you have a little bit better confidence to remain in the new UI. Once it rolls out to your account, you're able to find some of those reports and settings that you love to use in the old UI, and you'll be ready for the final changeover in December of 2023. If you have any questions about this new Google Ads UI, or honestly, anything else in the Google Ads interface, throw us a question in the comments and we'll get back to you. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the super thanks button.